Genesis, people overdo the amount of, I mean obviously they don't know, but they overdo the amount at Charterhouse. I mean, Genesis didn't really exist as a group at Charterhouse. Genesis um, was a group of songwriters at Charterhouse really, who sort of came together and just sang songs. The actual groups at Charterhouse were sort of before Genesis really. Um, I mean I was in a group with Mike Rutherford called the Anon that did all this, we played all the parties in the holidays and did all the Beatles and Stones songs. Um, Genesis didn't really exist as a group, but there were lots of different groups and we were all busily copying. But I think the thing that changed everything was, was for me, was probably two things really. It was one, we used to copy everything that came along. And uh, although it was great music, it wasn't that difficult to imitate. But then when the blues music came along, the playing, the vir virtuoso aspect of it was so great that I began to realize, I think, my limitations as a lead guitarist. Um, and it got more difficult to copy things. of mine called Tony Henderson, who I've never seen since, I wonder where he is now, but he was the one that was responsible for my playing the 12 string because he brought a 12 string to Charter House once and I remember him sitting in the, one of the fields in the summer of 67 and saying isn't this a wonderful sound, I remember thinking yeah that really is great, mm -hmm. I've got to have one of those and, and so started writing so and started, started moving away from um, copying everybody else's music.
actually frankly found it not very inspiring, very dull. Um, and uh, more than that, we started to irritate each other and argue a lot. And that was partly, I think, because of naivety. We lived in the same house together, which is fatal, you know. It was a big image in the late 60s, live in the country cottage together. But actually, it's a mistake in the end, because although it's, it's good to be together for a certain amount of time and forge a style, and it turned us into professionals, we kept at it for too long, and we needed to get away from each other. We never got away from the music. We never got away from each other. And therefore, the individual relationships in the group began to break down a bit. Mm -hmm. I drifted away from Mike Rutherford, Peter Gabriel drifted away from Tony Banks, and everybody became much more sort of, and this is at the age of, you know, 18 or 19, which is ridiculous. Our music was very serious. It wasn't the sort of group where you could go down to your local pub and have a drink and say, ah, oh, forget it, you know, there's no problem. It wasn't like that. Everybody was very sort of, it was all too high pressure, really. Um, and I found that it, it began to affect me. I just began to get very sort of edgy. This is, I don't mean the comparison in terms of quality, but if you had a group with Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, Brahms and Liszt, they wouldn't last one evening, you know, because they all have a different vision. Each one is right, but each one wants to have the freedom, the autonomy to be able to pursue that vision. That's what you have to have. And I think that the only way you can survive in a group like that is, is if you get to the point where everybody has their own kind of area cut out neatly like that. and Pieces series really became, um, in the early days, the private parts of Pieces series was um, when I was doing studio albums which were more rock orientated and under pressure from record companies to have hit singles and stuff. Those albums, uh, the private parts of Pieces series was sort of conceived as a kind of opposite to that. You know, home music, acoustic music, quite loose, nice atmosphere, not trying to be singles, more classical.
sort of got mixed feelings about it in England, really, because when I mean, we had this big thing about New Age, but it didn't really change things here that much. What seemed to happen was that every record company suddenly had a New Age side, and it seemed to me that they were signing people almost indiscriminately, mm. that a lot of the albums weren't terribly good. A lot of the stuff was pretty indifferent, really, and there didn't seem to be that much quality control. But I, I have to say that, obviously, I'm very grateful for that, because, I mean, if what... If the, if the New Age music boom hadn't come along in 86, 87, I would probably have not got one or two albums on CD. I probably wouldn't have got the advance to do Slow Dance with. Um, so, in fact, I'm very grateful to that, that move. It didn't really take off in England, though. So, in, the, in, in a sense, the New Age boom in England has had no real lasting legacy at all. I mean, most of the record companies have closed their, um, their New Age um, departments. I mean, I think it's a bit of a misnomer. What suddenly started happening was that the record company would put, you know, jazz, classical folk, uh, light classical stuff. I mean, anything that wasn't extremely much classical or extremely much pop would suddenly, would suddenly be called New Age, which didn't seem to make a lot of sense, really. I think ambient is rather different. Over here, mm -hmm. ambient has a lot of credence, has a lot of credibility. Um, and I must say that what I hear, what I hear of that, some of it's very good. And some of the sounds, particularly, very, very good, very good atmospheres. Some of it, the more dance oriented stuff, I'm not so into because I don't like the, um, it's very clever, produced for it, for a clever production. But, a lot of it all sounds, I want to say it sounds the same, I, I just mean that the drum patterns are the same. It's like you have to have the same drum pattern on the more dance oriented stuff, which is tedious. It's not creative, it's just dull. It's like a, you know, conforming to a party line. But, I mean, some of the more moody ambient stuff is great. Now, now that the evening must where is she sits by the river? Kind winds toss her hair, free like the swifts of the sky. I see her dim through the pains of my tears.
Don't rise again 